Hi. Yes, uh, my name is Erdem Yilmaz. I recently started my research PhD research project uh, within Computer Science Department of University of Reading. Um, Julian is my supervisor alongside uh, Brian Lawrence. So the the main research question was around how can we find smarter or better ways of uh, utilizing existing heterogeneous resources so we started uh, sorry we started with the with the research question itself as many of the speakers today has outlined that data sizes are approaching exabyte scale and it's not feasible to move the data around uh, the variety of uh, hardware resources are increasing and optimization techniques are a domain on its own um, so we don't we can't expect uh, every scientist to to do it so it's becoming a space on its own um, with this research uh, we are uh, we are aiming to solve some of the problems outlined earlier as well around a huge size of data so the obvious uh, first path to that is to moving the code to the data instead of copying the data around or find the data streaming solution to cope with it so um, the the other problem will be the data on its own uh, as a whole will not fit into uh, any single node's memory uh, then we can leverage streaming the data to the to the nodes to the processing nodes um, while doing it um, in situ and in transit processing techniques can be used so certain calculations or transformations done this way will save compute and post-process cycle um, of course as others also mentioned uh, node local storage uh, will uh, relieve the uh, network bandwidth and will help with the overall timing um, our main focus was around smart utilization of heterogeneous uh, hardware resources uh, to do that we need to make a certain decision to run to where to run the code on is it on a gpu or a cpu or, or a mixture of both and uh, a machine learning model uh, at the end of this project will be developed to make this decision to uh, depending on the inputs and the the metadata defined with the um, with the input and the workflows uh, will be used to make this decision to where to store the data and where to process it um, and uh, as, as I mentioned a slide earlier uh, scientists should care less about the optimization and its execution they should be spending their time on the science domain and get their products as the output of those simulations or applications so to do that um, the the provided framework or application needs to detect uh, the underlying hardware resource capability is possible um, the the user can also annotate uh, the input uh, prior to the execution of the workflow as well that's another option and then the machine learning uh, model will devise uh, the, the actual workflow that will be running uh, to its best performance so this is a this is a general picture of uh, of our proposal so here the user uh, is developing um, her his uh, scientific workflow using the predefined set of operators I mean this is just a naive approach to uh, just mention four four operators here just as an example of course uh, but the, the main idea behind uh, our proposal is to uh, get the scientists to use this predefined set of operators which I will come to the reason later on and 
as another secondary input, we are expecting a resource definition file. This can be detected or declared by the user. So the resources of CPU, GPU, RAM, uh, network, and available storage options uh, needs to be provided. Then, uh, given these inputs, uh, our proposed framework or platform will uh, will evaluate them and run through a machine learning model, and then create the actual executable uh, workflow. So this is the general essence. So yes, as shown and uh, told earlier, uh, the the user is expected to get use of previously created uh, predefined operators so that um, their uh, performance and um, their uh, workload or CPU, RAM or uh, GPU requirements are known. Hence, we can make the decision uh, to get those operators executed on GPU or CPU. And while doing that, these operators will be able to publish their uh, provenance and performance data, which will be collected and, and will be get used of within the machine learning model to uh, train itself on the go as a, um, as a training mechanism. So the, the user will be declaring the workflow uh, with this as a free metadata. Um, the, the predefined operators will be in use and possibly with a directed acyclic graph. Um, at the moment, we are experimenting with, with NetCDF. And while defining these inputs, the user might uh, just declare the type, file type, the location, the size, which all of these can be detected as well. And then the declaration of the hardware resources uh, that is allocated to this experiment needs to be, again, uh, supplied. Uh, as I summarized in the, with, the, with the picture two slides ago, um, the machine learning model will be uh, taking these inputs and making the decision depending on the operator and the input where to run them, CPU or GPU, or make the storage uh, uh, decisions, grouping the tasks to reduce communication. And while doing that, the execution metrics will be fed back to the uh, machine learning model for, for training on the go. Um, we have started um, exploring uh, options we have, and the easiest uh, way to start doing something is, uh, to me at least, it's Python. So we created ourselves um, a, f uh, a file to work on, an FCDF file. And then we experimented with it using various languages and platforms. Uh, the examples were uh, C++, written in C++. Uh, the, some of them are written in Python. And in, within the Python uh, language space, it's NumPy, QDPy, which is uh, the uh, NVIDIA-backed uh, GPU arrays, like NumPy arrays and operations. And Dusk is also we worked with, and we we also get use of GStreamer um, uh, as as an example application. We I have developed uh, two custom plugins. Um, I will explain further. Uh, I will explain the reasoning behind developing this GStreamer application later on. And we we are planning to uh, explore a few others like uh, the DeepStream SDK from NVIDIA and readily available streaming frameworks, Apache Flink or Apache Storm is in our plans for future experimenting. So the the base of our um, experiment is, is, is an SCDF file, uh, four gigabytes in size. Uh, we stored it on a, on a shared memory device. Um, the size file is, sorry, the structure of the file is a thousand by thousand uh, grid with thousand uh, time frames. 
the individual um, data cells is single is representing a temperature value randomly generated. The operation we used is, is a basic mean operation uh, over the grid, uh, mean operation of grid entries overall time frames. So at the end of the operation, we end up with that thousand by thousand um, a grid uh, where each uh, cell represents the the mean of the all time frames for that location. The machine we uh, used for these experiments uh, was a was a machine with 132 uh, gigabytes uh, RAM, two uh, processors with 16 cores, 32 with hyperthreading, and the GPU V100 uh, from NVIDIA with 16 giga RAM and 5,120 CUDA cores. Uh, as I said, we started the experiment with Python as it's easier and faster to uh, get started with. Um, our first approach was uh, a, a triple for loop uh, based on the based on the grid nature of the data itself. So this is a very uh, first attempt brute force <laughs> trying to take a mean over on uh, over over a three dimensional data. Therefore, the triple for loop, which uh, which doesn't use any Python um, array indexing, uh, how to say, optimizations. This is just brute force calculation of of it as would, as you would do on a on a piece of paper. So therefore, it takes a horrible amount of time, 2,008 seconds, to complete over this um, over this uh, four gigabyte file, um, which uses a single processor process. Then we switched our attention to doing it with multiple processes. So the the machine we were using has 32 uh, hyperthreading, uh, hyperthreads, and we used 30 of them uh, and achieved a significantly lower one, 276 seconds. Again, on the same algorithm, which doesn't take any optimization without any optimization. Then we switched our attention to NumPy just to get use of um, readily available, highly optimized libraries. The, the same operation with NumPy took 10 seconds <laughs> compared to our triple for loop approach. Um, they are highly optimized C libraries, of course, under the hood. Uh, the, the only drawback is the, you need to load all the data into memory and it's not feasible with larger data, depends on your uh, RAM size on the node. So this is basically the, how many? Three, three lines effective, uh, apart from the imports, to calculate the data. Then switched our attention to QPy, which is uh, a CUDA version of NumPy, a NumPy-like operation with CUDA. So the, the same mean operation itself, just the mean itself, 2.3 seconds on the same data, the same machine. The the end-to-end -end operation, starting from the um, uh, starting from the Python interpreter being started. So read, load, and calculate took 13 seconds. So this is the end-to-end -end timing. Um, most of the data time is spent on reading the data. I don't have the breakdown of 13 seconds, but it's around six seconds or so on the on the file read operation. And then the comes the extraction. The the mean operation itself took 0.3 seconds. So again requires all data to be loaded onto the memory, then copied onto the device, as you would do with a normal CUDA operation. Um, I'm not sure of the internals actually how it is doing the uh, host to device memory copy. The limiting factor uh, was the file access, as I mentioned. Otherwise, otherwise the mean is pretty fast. So this is the how many lines? Again, six six lines of code uh, to do it. You start with a, a device, and within this with block, you extract the variable. I intentionally closed that 
just to measure the uh, exact copying times, but you don't need to. And take the mean and return the result as a NumPy error array back. And I am slightly running out of time. Sorry, I will speed up. Um, we, we did the same experiment at C++. We achieved 11 seconds uh, in total to do the, again, the triple for loop approach, which is not uh, good enough. And then we switched ourselves to, again, writing the CUDA kernel ourselves, uh, again, with C++. The first approach with this triple loop uh, grid-wise operation under CUDA didn't prove anything uh, useful. Uh, this was, a, again, as I mentioned, a <laughs> naive approach to GPU programming. It's heavily synchronized. It's, it doesn't use the uh, CUDA course uh, well enough. So um, Julian uh, kindly pointed out uh, how to how to optimize it, and we uh, we devised the the Turcuda kernel, uh, which I will present shortly. But before going that, we also tried uh, the CUDA streaming, which uh, essentially tries to overlap the, the host-to-device uh, memory copy with the CUDA kernel operation to gain some speed, um, which didn't prove useful in our case due to the kernel itself. And we also tried running the same um, same experiment. This was this 11 seconds was achieved by running it through a shared memory. Um, we tried uh, executing it to see how it will respond on an on an NFS from the same four gigabyte file on an NFS with the CUDA setup. It took 42 seconds. This is the CUDA profiler output for this uh, first approach to our. Uh, Naive to the kernel computation. So it, the mean took uh, five five seconds, and the CUDA device synchronizes around again five seconds, which sum up to the to the eleven seconds attention, which is uh, far away from being optimal. So with the improved kernel. So uh, as I said, credits to Julian. He pointed out uh, how we can map the uh, sorry solve the problem. Uh, by using the flat map architecture uh, of the of the data, so the data instead of treating it as a as a grid, uh, we, we we treat it as a as a as a flat uh, array and use the thread indexing, uh, which is common to uh, CUDA programming, and we achieved uh, a very nice improvement. Uh, the the end result was using the CUDA cores more effectively, and that that 10 seconds, 11 seconds uh, runtime on CUDA dropped to three seconds. It's almost uh, three times uh, effective. The the host uh, to device data copy. Uh, this is copying this four gigabyte data uh, from host GPU device took 350 milliseconds. And the kernel execution took 25 milliseconds. The, the highlight of this new optimized shorter kernel uh, is that it replaces the triple loops with a flat array indexing. And there are some minor uh, speed up uh, opportunities around use, use of pinned memory. And the profiler output reflects the speed up very well. So we have 25 milliseconds almost um, kernel execution time and 350 milliseconds of uh, host to device mem copy. And with this setup, which where we use also use um, CUDA streaming, we divided the data into chunks, 32 of them, and this is the overall profiler output. We also experimented with dask and XRA. Uh, our our same approach took 12 seconds, and this, this is the code. If anyone is more interested, I can explain later on further what we have done with it. I'm sorry I ran out of time. I was going to explain the G streamer and 
uh, what we have done with it. So we develop. Go, uh, go, go for it. Okay. So with uh, our aim to to develop the application with GStreamer is to interface our application with NVIDIA DeepStream. Actually, maybe I should start from there. So this is our uh, future plan for testing. NVIDIA DeepStream is a software development kit SDK to get use of CUDA through GStreamer interface. Uh, it is mainly targeting uh, video processing um, SDK and try to run um, machine learning algorithms on, on captured images uh, from video sources to decoding and then uh, inference models run on the captured data and then you do some post-processing and you develop your application basically around around this SDK. Our aim was whether if we can get use of this SDK as it is and get use of CUDA uh, to run our uh, workflows uh, on this SDK. To do that, you need a GStreamer uh, plugin that will help you to decode the data into the stream. Uh, existing GStreamer modules are um, coupled with uh, video file sources and direct video sources. So what we did, we created a NetCDF GStreamer plugin. So yes, we created a NetCDF GStreamer plugin. So this one uh, reads the time frame uh, grid data from the NetCDF and then puts it to the to the GStreamer uh, plugin uh, stream. And a another uh, plugin which developed by us is uh, is used to um, accumulate and take the mean. Make uh, the the mean operation is run on this filter. We didn't write any any sync element, which is very complex to write. And yes, so that's what we did, and we are planning to interface these two elements into the deep stream SDK, so that if we can get use of um, NVIDIA DeepStream SDK by means of transferring our net CDF grid data as if it was a raw video uh, frame and then write uh, custom GPU uh, uh, plugins to, to do the operations on CUDA. Try to see if we can benefit from the existing NVIDIA's um, SDK. So that was our aim. As next steps, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, we will experiment with NVIDIA DeepStream, and we will also try to uh, investigate how we can get use of workflow languages. CWL and Swift are the candidates at the moment. We are investigating the rest, and we are planning to develop a prototype uh, that will uh, lay out a workflow to resource mapping through a machine learning model. So that's where we are. Um, this is a short summary of what we have done so far. Um, within this summary, uh, we can go through all of the details, but it's in a nutshell, it's the numbers put together on the previous uh, studies, experiments, sorry. Um, the important bit is our uh, comparison. So um, the Dusk, although although performed slower compared to NumPy, which was Dusk took around 12 seconds because it's also firing up uh, clusters to to set it up, and then when when compared to NumPy, it's uh, considerably slower. However, it is distributed. It's the, that's why it is appealing to us. Uh, it can cope with uh, larger uh, files where NumPy is limited to the nodes memory. Um, CUDA is, is a faster alternative provided the problem is pleasingly parallel, yes. So this is one thing we, we noted with our uh, experiment. The, the problem we have at the end, uh, the mean operation over time frames is not exactly parallel uh, due to uh, constant uh, file read options. So it's bounded by the file I.O. Uh, but with a, with a pleasingly parallel, or if you have the opportunity to read the data and then uh, start working on it, GPU provides 
uh, very good results, improved results. And and yes, the tuning around HPC and GPU makes a lot of difference. And and it's <laughs> we adhere to that. It's a complex domain of engineering, and some and most of the time uh, beyond the scope of the scientist who is working on a specific problem. So that's that's the end of my slides. Uh, any questions? We'll overrun the time. Sorry. <laughs>